guess what guys? It's 2019. So if you notice that the intro is way darker than the middle of the video, that's because we only had a limited amount of light and I wanted to go ahead and get those shots out of the way when we could do something raising our shutter speed. So there's the discrepancy. First of all, a lot of the times when I'm doing B-roll, I'm doing it in 60 frames per second and then slowing it down to 40%. Now, of course, shooting in 60 frames a second does give you that slow motion feel, which kind of will make it feel more of that YouTube cinematic feeling that everyone's going for these days. But another thing that it does for you when you're shooting handheld is it slows down all of the jitters, all of the shakes by 40%. So if I just shoot this at 24 frames per second, it's going to look like this. Whereas if I switch it to 60 frames per second, you get slower movement. But it also stabilizes your footage so that it doesn't have those little micro jitters that we're always trying to avoid when we're doing handheld shooting because that's sort of a dead giveaway that we're not using a stabilizer. So another thing that I like to do is I like to shoot up. Now there's a couple of reasons for that. Like right here, if I'm shooting up, I'm able to get this building up here. But if I was shooting this ground, then I would get a broken fan and a broken fence, and it just would not look as good as if when I'm shooting up. It seems to me like a lot of times what's up is a lot more interesting than what's down because it takes a lot more effort to put something up than take something down. And so usually people aren't putting trash and stuff in the sky, they're putting it on the ground. Now, this is not a be-all, end-all course for handheld shooting. In fact, I'm not even talking about the top tips for shooting handheld, but what I'm talking about is what I do when I'm shooting handheld because I can't really address what other people do and how it works for someone else. What I can tell you is what works for me and what I like to do. Another thing you wanna do is you wanna move with your whole body. Moving your entire body will allow you to get more stable movement, more consistent movement moving forward. Whereas if I just tried to push forward with my arms, you just cannot get a stable footage, no matter what you do, unless you're using a gimbal. But handheld, you want to move your entire body. And that's something I do all the time, is a lunge forward or a lunge backward. Another thing that I do all the time is I actually put my Gorillapod and my microphone on. That way it puts more weight onto the camera. Now I've done a video about how the cage is a must have for handheld video. And that is so totally true because it gives you a better grip. But another thing that it does is it gives you much more of a heavy setup. I mean, it's not extremely heavy, but when you're talking about such a light camera, it makes a huge difference. So my last tip would be what I would call perceived stabilization. And that's when I'm doing whip transitions. I know I've been doing a lot of whip transitions recently, and that's because I'm shooting a lot of handheld. And what I mean by perceived stabilization is when you're doing when you're doing a whip transition, is because you have a fast movement in and a fast movement out, people don't notice as much the lack of stability in the in-between shot. It's kind of a little trick of the mind that we can use in video, and the fact that they're distracted by what they just whipped into and whipped out of, is it kind of helps tell the story. Now you want to use whip transitions correctly. I'm gonna do a video about in-camera transitions in the future, but that's not gonna to be today. But using whip transitions is a really good way of getting perceived stabilization 
in your videos. Sorry if you're getting whiplash going all over the place without any transition shots. That's the problem with vlogging during the winter is that you just don't have as much time in the evenings after work because most of us aren't doing this full time. We're doing it as a side thing and we have full time jobs. And the day that we were doing that, we only had an hour of daylight and I wanted to get all of those tips in when we were out at the mill because it was like a great place to do that. And BJ could take that video for me and I didn't have to worry about getting that video while giving the tips. So it kind of worked out, but it makes it so I have to do this. make it clear why I think you should be learning how to shoot handheld because I know stabilizers are really inexpensive these days I I'm okay really inexpensive in comparison to what they used to be but I think it's still important that we learn how to shoot handheld and that we practice shooting handheld because there are some things that you just cannot do with a stabilizer. For one, a stabilizer is big. It doesn't matter whether you're using a handheld gimbal or a steady cam, it's gonna be a lot bigger of a setup. It's going to look more professional. And as vloggers, we can't use that in a lot of places. People do weird things like not allow you to have your camera on you if they think you have a professional camera. And so especially for the vlogging type of videos, we need to be learning to shoot handheld because if you're always shooting with a gimbal, but then you have a time where you cannot take your gimbal with you, that's going to cripple you as a filmmaker. Or if you buy a gimbal like uh, the Zion Crane V2, which is made for small or mirrorless cameras, and then you buy something like a cinema camera or even like a 1DX or even a bigger mirrorless camera that exceeds the weight capacity, then you're going to have to upgrade your gimbal as well as your camera in order to get stable footage. Whereas if you would have learned handheld, you could, would have been able to continue to get stable footage. It would have looked different, had a different feel to it. You would have continued to be able to get stable footage in the meantime while you're saving up for a larger gimbal for larger cameras. So it's important for you to learn how to do really good handheld video because that is a skill that is going to transfer through every camera. A gimbal will not, a steady cam will not. You're going to have to upgrade those all the time, but I think shooting handheld, these technique things, are kind of like lenses where no matter what camera you pick up, lenses are always going to help you get better footage. And that is my philosophy in doing filmmaking and YouTube is doing and getting things that will help me continue to get better and better footage. I also want to say thank you to BJ for helping me get some of that footage. Uh, it was really nice being able to walk with you and not have to worry about setting up my camera and just it was just super great to have someone to film with. I know I've been shooting with Cody a lot, but I've actually been shooting with BJ for years. And uh, he's a really good friend of mine. He has a YouTube channel. Go over, subscribe to his channel. If he gets 100 subscribers by the end of this week, then he'll make another video. At least I'll, I'll make sure that he makes another video. I guess I'm going to do a little bit of a test of whether the M50 is just going to totally break down in a light drizzle because uh, it's raining again, light is beautiful, but uh, the rain can get really annoying. But I mean, it's, it's North Carolina. I'm going to have to deal with rain and I need to continue putting out content. I can't let the rain stop me. I wish this camera was weather sealed, but so far it's doing fine in just this light drizzle. Don't try it at home if you don't want to potentially risk your gear. So I just realized that my mic was unplugged for my outro clip, so I didn't get that audio. I'm going to add my voice to the people who say, please give us audio meters on this camera. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Don't bring your M50s out in the rain, and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah, be careful. Uh, you don't want to get this camera too wet.